Welcome to episode three of Pretend I'm Dumb About Star Wars. I'm Tom Merritt. I assume you kind of know the premise by now. If you're jumping in right at the beginning of this podcast into episode three, in other words, you skipped episodes one and two, uh, well then, I am going to be watching all of the Star Wars episodes, one through seven, counting down to episode seven. Uh, but trying to take the perspective of somebody who has never seen them before. And that's what I've been doing with episodes one and two. And today, episode three, I will be pretending I'm dumb about Revenge of the Sith. Big thanks to Andrew Allen Trio, though, by the way, for the intro music there. AndrewAllenTrio.com. And of course, uh, as we come into a- Revenge of the Sith, we're coming off of episode two that made no sense but started a war. So I'm assuming... We're going to be uh, seeing a war, and I'm right off the bat. Uh, we're by okay, but first of all, we we get the uh, we get the scrolling text introducing things. So I guess we're going to be doing that every time. Uh, heroes on both sides. It says in the text, heroes on both sides. Well, there you go. See, last time I was like, maybe maybe Duco isn't bad. Uh, maybe the Republic is bad. Maybe the Separatists are are actually the good guys. It seems pretty mixed up. Uh, and yet, here we are. Heroes on both sides. Uh, they mentioned somebody named General Grievous. I have no idea who that is. I suppose we're going to meet him in this movie. Uh, and they abducted the Chancellor. And I'm kind of... I kind of remember who the Chancellor is. Uh, but wow. Forget all that. Because that battle scene at the beginning is amazing. Uh, this isn't uh just an abduction man this is a huge huge battle right over the big city planet that's the capital of the whole republic uh epic epic stuff uh we get to see that the clones can fly now uh so obviously the republic kept the clones they're like oh we found these clones Uh, we might as well keep them you know mom can we keep them uh everybody has a little round headed robot like R2. We've got to know R2. It uh, looks like Kenobi has one too, So, uh, but that one doesn't stick around. Buzz droids show up. Now that is inefficient. Why not just have them explode and, and blow up the thing that they hit? You could have little buzz droids go and attach themselves and then explode, but instead they just try to pull the ship apart, but which really actually gives uh, R2 a chance to sap one, uh, gives Anakin a chance to try to save Kenobi. Although these two, are we really supposed to believe these two like each other? Because all they do is fight, fight, fight. Uh, then we get landed. Anakin has a robe now. So he's like, he's a robe guy. He's he's like Kenobi. Now Kenobi was a trainee. Then he was a robe guy. Now Anakin's a robe guy. So I guess he's all grown up. Uh, really cool crash landing. Showing the piloting skills that we learned in episode one. Still kicking around with Anakin. Uh, although... Really dangerous to land that in the middle of a city planet, although I guess I don't know where else you would you would land it. Uh, then we go to this big robot that's coughing, and I'm really confused by that, but the Federation guys are there, so I know this is the Separatists. These are the bad guys. Uh, and, uh, and, and we've got Anakin and Kenobi in an elevator. So kind of harking back to episode one, except instead of for negotiations, it's time, it's time for rescue. Uh, why Anakin jumps from the elevator when it starts moving, just just stay on. Just jump down. Jump down into the elevator, not jump up. Um, also, it's pretty weird that any robot that wanders in can use the elevator. In fact, it's pretty weird that these Separatist ships, these Federation ships, uh, just allow anybody to fly in anytime, even in the middle of a battle. Just fly in. I know they were trying to close the door. Uh, but again, hearkening back to episode one, when Special Boy, who we now know as Anakin, uh, just kind of flew into that, that Federation ship. Uh, also, uh, there, there was a little thing about loose wires in R2, and I'm like, but didn't he get a medal or something in episode one? Okay, uh, so they find the Chancellor. Uh, he's the old Naboo Senator guy, who is, uh, now I remember, he got the special powers, he became Chancellor, uh, and so he's he's on the good guy's side, he's, he's with Padme and all of them. Uh, Dooku, wow, can jump. And then we get another harken back to episode one, where um, Kenobi and his master fought the red-faced guy with the horns. Now they're fu- it's Kenobi and his trainee 
uh, Anakin fighting Dooku. Uh, then we get a little bit of a revival of Episode Two battle, uh, where Dooku pretty much mastered, pretty much schooled Kenobi and Anakin. But these guys are better now, so they're able to have a better, uh, better fight. In fact, Anakin's much better. Um, don't forget, Dooku can do lightning, though. That was that was the thing that 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 was a problem at the end of Episode Two. The other thing at the Episode Two, remember, Yoda showed up. And the way Dooku got away was to to make Yoda choose between saving his friends or continuing the battle. Well, Dooku throws a thing down on Kenobi, knocks him out. Anakin's like, no, I'm after you. I learned from that battle. I am going to take you out, mister. Uh, so he goes and uh, he, he gets uh, the Chancellor. He gets uh, Dooku. It cuts off Dooku's hands and then grabs... Dooku's lightsaber, so he has two lightsabers right at his neck. And the Chancellor is cold-blooded. I guess he's upset. He's been abducted by these guys. He hates Dooku. He's like, yeah, kill him. Just kill him. Um, and oh, Anakin does it? And then he immediately feels bad. It's like, I, I shouldn't have done that. That is not the Jedi way. Why did I do that? Why did he do that? Uh, oh, right. Um, then the Chancellor's like, oh, you, you remember you told me about your mom. So when they got so chummy, I don't remember. Maybe that happened in episode two, and I just don't remember it. Um, so I guess Palpatine and Anakin are, are friends. Uh, and then and then Palpatine gets super cold. He's like, oh, no, we got no time to save Kenobi. Let's, let's, let's chill. And Anakin's like, no, 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 look, I just did a bad thing. I'm not doing a, an even worse thing. We're saving Kenobi. Uh, R2 is apparently an elevator operator because he's able to, they, they keep asking him to, to run the elevator for them. Uh, then the ship starts tilting into the atmosphere and suddenly there's gravity. Didn't look like they were that close to the planet for there to be gravity and everybody falling around, but it gives us a, a nice little way for, uh, the Chancellor and Kenobi and Anakin to get, uh, to get the, uh, captured. And we find out, oh, coughing robot guy is General Grievous. Um, he collects lightsabers, although he apparently only has one. Not much of a collection at this point. Uh, and then R2 proves his worth. He's more than an elevator operator. He's got hidden talents. He can shoot lightsabers out of his head. Uh, so there you go. Uh, then Grievous is like, oh, yeah, well, I got spare lightsabers. Uh Nice move, robot guy. Still don't understand why he coughs. Clever move, too. After the battle, they battle, they battle, the battle, and then he just jumps in an escape pod. He's like, well, you guys are toast now because the ship is going to crash, and I'm out of here, and I'm going to take all the escape pods with me. Uh, Chancellor seems oddly calm through all of this. I would have think that they would have had him freaking out a little bit more. Um, and then, of course, we see the piloting skills that I was talking about where Anakin can crash land the ship. Uh, Kenobi being a little patroni patronizing. <sighs> and then it's back to the love story. Now, it's not as bad as it was in episode two. Um, but I, I guess I guess we love each other. Uh, and what is up with that hair? Padme. Kind of look like Mickey Mouse. Uh, then she's like, yeah, let's let's just run off to Naboo. Uh, oh, also, guess what? Oh, oh, they're still hiding. They're still hiding their love. Uh, and, and, and let me rewind there. Anakin's gonna be a dad. She's preggers. She's gonna have a baby. Uh, he seems less creepy now. At least he's not that creepy anymore. So, so maybe if I just forget everything that happened in episode two, I can believe that they actually love each other. Uh, uh, back to Grievous. Uh, Grievous is not the apprentice to the dark robe guy, the Sidious guy. Uh, I would assume Grievous was just like next on the list after Dooku, the way Dooku was after a uh, horn red face guy. But no, uh, Dark Robe guy still has control, though. And then let me just say right off the top, beautiful sets, beautiful planets in all three of these movies. Like, I know we've been to the city planet and I think it's called Coruscant, but wow, is it gorgeous. Um, and then, yeah, then then Padme says, let's run back to Nabu. All right, sappy love stuff. Yawn. Uh, Anakin having bad dreams. It was a little bit out of, a little weird. I'm like, wait, what? what's happening to Padme? Oh, it's a dream. Okay. Uh, stress dream. Uh, like about what his mom, when he remember he had the ones about his mom in the last episode, that's bad news for Padme because that did not turn out so well for Anakin's mom. Uh and then she sees the little thing that I guess she gave him in episode one. Remember when I gave that to you when you were like jailbait and I was way too old for you? 
Um, that's kind of a weird reminder. So secret love, secret baby, uh, secret agony dreams, probably bad news. Uh, but Anakin shows some maturity. He goes to Yoda and says, hey, green guy, I've been having some bad dreams. What's up with that? I don't really want to admit that I broke all the Jedi rules and I have a secret relationship and made a baby with Padme, but I do want some help. Uh, so that's a good sign. And uh, and Yoda gives him good, exa- good advice. Just let go, man. Just let go. Uh, then Kenobi gives Anakin some good advice and it says Palpatine is a little creepy, uh, which we all know because he wanted to leave Kenobi behind. Um, but Palpatine can apparently appoint Jedi to the council, or at least the council lets him do that. I wouldn't trust him. Uh, and then we have Anakin telling Palpatine like, really, you can do that? I don't think they're going to like that. And then when they don't like it and they say, fine, you can be on the council, I guess, but we're not going to make you a master. He gets, Anakin gets mad. Um, and then Yoda's like, you know what? I need to go. I need to leave the capital. I need to help some other planet or something. So that's not good because that means the Jedi Council is going to be left without their main leader. Uh, then they want Anakin to spy on the Chancellor. Chancellor wants Anakin to spy on the Council. Anakin's turning into a political football. So that's going to mess with his head. So I'm seeing where this is going now. You've got Anakin stressed out, trying to hide uh, the the baby, having stress dreams about Padme, and being torn between Palpatine and Yoda. Well, meanwhile, everybody's still trying to fight the Separatists. Oh, and then they mentioned he was the chosen one. I kind of forgot that. They haven't really made much of the fact. I mean, it was made a big deal out of it in episode one, but I, I sort of keep forgetting, like, oh, right, he's also special boy. He's special boy all grown up. Um, although Sam Jackson thinks maybe he's not, so maybe Sam Jackson's right. Maybe Anakin's just indie. Maybe he's going to go rogue and just be like, screw you all, I'm Anakin, and I will just do what I want. Um Maybe the Jedi are bad. Anyway, this is good stuff. This is making me think about things. You know, this is not a straight ahead plot, uh, but it's not confusing like in episode two. Uh, they just say, look, Anakin, life's complicated. You got nothing but bad options to choose from. Okay. Uh, so maybe Padme's a separatist. Then we get Padme saying, like, maybe the Republic isn't right on this. And like, oh my God, is she going to jump ship? Is going to make things more complicated? Think about Padme. I always am like, you know, Anakin should be thinking this. And then Padme says what I was thinking. So she always makes sense. I still don't believe them as a couple, though. Uh, Palpatine, no good. Uh, there are no good guys. The Jedi are bad. They they make bad decisions all the time. Uh, they they don't really they they really just kind of you know follow the political winds. Uh, Palpatine is manipulative and paranoid, and then of course the separatists and and they're pretty much led by dark robe guy uh, Sidious. They're evil. So there's no there's nothing good. It's Jedi versus Chancellor versus separatists here. Good is a point of view. Wow, uh, we we've got some pragmatists in the audience. Okay. Uh, Palpatine knows how to push Anakin's buttons. That becomes really obvious. Anakin uh, is is a political football. Palpatine wants him on his side. Kenobi uh, should should go, but doesn't. Anakin can go with him when they say like Kenobi. Okay, you go, we know where Grievous is. Kenobi, you go get him. Anakin usually goes with with Kenobi to places. Why why not send Kenobi? Except they don't trust him now because they know he's the political football. So that makes sense. Uh, then we see Yoda on a planet full of of hairy Tarzan people who make Tarzan noises. Um, it was a little weird to understand at first why we were seeing him help with the Tarzan people war. Uh, unless Yoda is going to die there, it definitely is setting us up for something. Uh, I don't believe. Kenobi and Anakin like each other, uh, but Kenobi is right about telling Anakin to be patient. More nightmares, this time with Obi-Wan in them. That's intriguing. So now Obi-Wan's drawn into the nightmares. Is that bad news for Obi-Wan? And man, Palpatine just keeps getting in Anakin's head. Okay, uh, good scene with the toothy guy when Kenobi lands on the planet, and he's like, "Uh, no, nothing to see here. They're totally upstairs. Help us. Uh, is he going to help us? I don't know. That was a great scene. I like that. Um, I don't know where t- where Kenobi got the lizard dog thing to ride. That was weird, but okay. Uh, Separatists on the move. Uh, at first, I'm like, wait, didn't Kenobi just lands in the middle and confronts Grievous without backup? Just They should just shoot Kenobi. But then we start this amazing battle scene where 
Grievous shows that he has four arms and they each can hold a lightsaber, show off. Uh, and then, of course, there's the backup. The clone army shows up. Uh, Grievous, we notice, has a beating heart and skin around his eyes. So I guess he's not a robot. Uh, well, he's not all robot anyway. And those eyes, man. Looks like a dinosaur. Uh, then Grievous gets in a ridiculous motorcycle that has legs. I mean, it's one of those things where you're like, a five-year-old made that up. Like, it's a wheel, and it can run, but then it has legs, so it can go sometimes. So we get a tra- chase scene, whatever. Um, yeah, okay. How does Palpatine know the Force? He starts talking to Anakin. We're back in the Capitol. He starts talking to Anakin about the Force. Dark side. What the... Palpatine is working for bad robe guy. He's working for Sidious. That's why Grievous wasn't the apprentice. Because Palpatine is Sidious's apprentice. Now the clone army makes sense. All that confusion from episode two, which I still think wasn't handled that great, makes sense because uh, this uh, this is why Palpatine had Anakin kill Dooku. Uh, This is why the clones were allowed to go to the Republic and and how Palpatine is like, we'll just uh, don't don't look too closely. We'll just take that clone army Um, because really I want to have a war. Uh, going on because I'm actually leading both sides. Um, really tempting Anakin. Uh, okay, so we go back to the battle. Nice to see Kenobi use a gun, even though he calls it uncivilized. That was funny. Uh, and then Anakin goes and turns in Palpatine. He's like, hey, man, I'm, I know where my lo- loyalties lie now. I am a Jedi. And let me tell you, Sam Jackson, Palpatine is a Sith. And Sam Jackson's like, for real? Seriously? Are we seriously a Sith? You're real. Okay. Uh, Stay away from Palpatine. You should not trust them. And that is right. Sam Jackson should go take care of Palpatine. Anakin's got a messed up head about him. Just stay away from him. We go to Padme's lovely apartment. Where does Anakin live, though, by the way? We're always in Padme's apartment. and I, They can't be living together. That would be way too obvious. Anyway, um, Anakin's just staring out and crying because he's messed up. Then he goes and takes a ride. He goes and jumps in the car. Padme should not have let him drive. I'm just saying. Uh, Palpatine then pulls out a lightsaber on Samuel Jackson. And he could use it. Uh, Yeah, that's awesome. Of course, Anakin never follows the rules. That's why he shows up. He's like, I can't stay away. I have to help my buddy Sam Jackson. Um, They should put stronger glass in Palpatine's office, by the way. I know he's a Sith and evil and everything, but... Like, just one little lightsaber tap should not break that entire window. Uh, The good guys win. Sam Jackson has him at gunpoint or saber point, and Anakin is there for backup. And then, oh, 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 no. Palpatine could do the lightning thing that Dooku could do. Well, of course he could. He's, He's an apprentice, just like Dooku, but he's not as strong. For some reason, when Palpatine does it, it makes him turn old. Uh, So he's he doesn't have as much power as Dooku did. Uh, Anakin, uh, he had, you know, Palpatine's not so weak. Anakin is confused. You understand why Sam Jackson was right that Anakin shouldn't have got there. Uh, okay, so Anakin uh, should should arrest uh, should arrest Palpatine now for if Palpatine kills Sam Jackson. Uh, and throws him like halfway across the city. Nobody noticed that. Uh, Palpatine is now a cartoon face. Apparently, it does not look real. And then, what? <laughs> I just wrote what? Why? Anakin's just like, all right, I'll swear my loyalty to you. Oh, she's creepy. Anakin. He's like, I just want to save Padme. Always thinking with his crotch. Uh, kind of hard to swallow this one. Seems very abrupt. And. Uh, and by the way, I did like the little red guys standing in the corner over there. So, um, okay. Palpatine says, you know what? I'll give you a new name, Anakin. I'm going to call you Darth Vader. Because I think we had Darth Tyrannus, Darth Sidious. Now we got Darth Vader. And blow my mind, Palpatine is bad robe guy. Can you believe that? So wait, 
So wait, Palpatine was in charge of the Republic and in charge of the Separatists. He wasn't just working for the guy in charge of the Separatists. He, he was both sides the whole time. For real? Also, Anakin just goes and kill Jedi now? That doesn't seem believable. But I guess he just really wants to. He's always been creepy about Padme. Okay. Uh, Separatists were just a plot to get the Chancellor's powers. It all it all actually makes sense on the Chancellor's side now. A lot of the stuff that confused the hell out of me in Episode 2, which, again, I think should have been handled differently, totally makes sense to me now. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. I'm in. I'm back in. I'm getting this. I'm loving it. Uh, then Order 66 or whatever that is, the clones just start turning on Jedi that makes the clones make perfect sense why Tyrannus would order them for Sidious and then let the Republic get them because Palpatine was Sidious and he wanted the clones to be programmed to follow his order to turn against the Jedi. I'm a little worried about our green friend Yoda. Uh, but thankfully, one of these Tarzan guys helps him escape. And then as if it weren't hard enough to uh, believe in the abrupt change of Anakin to Darth Vader, uh, he goes and kills little kids. That's a, That was a little much. That was across the line. Uh, totally unbelievable. Totally unnecessary. At least they didn't show it. And then some guy in a car shows up and says, I'd like to go in the temple. And then a young kid runs out. And he's like, I better go. I better get out of here. No idea who that is. Uh, I've... <laughs> we have not been introduced to this character, at least not in any significant way. Then quickly we see, oh, look, Kenobi survived. He landed in some water. He's going to sneak out. Uh, the Tarzan guys are helping Yoda. Oh, and then, and then the guy that we had never met before who wanted to see the Jedi is named Senator Organa. We get his name. Uh, he is a person who decides he's going to go save the Jedi. So there's hope for Kenobi. There's hope for Yoda. I guess there's no hope for Anakin. Uh, stay away from Anakin Padme. Kenobi tries to warn her. Padme's like, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. You shouldn't, Padme. Run. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm ahead of myself. This is Anakin uh, telling Padme stuff, and I'm telling Padme she should run. Okay, so then Anakin goes off to a volcano planet. The volcano planet's awesome. The planets are always awesome in all of these episodes. Uh uh, why would a session of Congress make it easier to sneak into the temple? I have no idea, but Kenobi and Yoda seem to think that that's true. Uh, so Anakin, I mean Vader, Anakin Vader uh, is going to go kill the Separatists and end the war. He's going to bring peace. So that, you know, again, we've started to learn that this this whole series is about blurring the lines between good and evil. Here's Anakin turned almost ridiculously, unbelievably evil suddenly, but he's going to bring peace because he's going to kill the Separatists and end the war. Um, did not look that easy. They're like, oh, it'll be easy to get in the temple. Did not look that easy to get in the temple. They had to they'll work at it. By the way, what happened to Jar Jar, the comic relief? The comic relief guy. Where did he go? We haven't seen him this entire episode. Uh, then, you know, we see Vader, Anakin Vader, uh, killing all the separatists, and he's got the red eyes. Uh, and then we see Palpatine able to just stand up and go, you know what? I think I want to be emperor, especially now that I have cartoon face. So guess what? I'm emperor! Yay! Oh, this is how democracy dies. Everybody cheering for an emperor. Uh, okay, whatever. So he's emperor. Okay, so now we have an empire. That sounds more evil. Why not? Uh, then Kenobi's real sad about Anakin, but you know what? I don't think... I never believed he liked him anyway. Uh, Yoda and Kenobi... Uh, decide to split up. Now here, this is a bad idea. Yoda and Kenobi should go take on Palpatine together, combine their forces. They're the last of the Jedi at this point, pretty much, as far as we know. And yet, they split up. Now I know Yoda's the most powerful, so it does make sense if they split up, but why split up? Both of them take down Palpatine, and then both of them go get Anakin, and maybe try to turn him back to the good side. He hasn't been bad that long. Uh, but okay. Uh, wow, Padme looks pregnant. And Kenobi does notice it, to be fair. Um, and he guesses who the father is. And then we see sad Anakin. He's evil, but he's sad. So we know, like, maybe maybe Kenobi can change him back. Maybe Padme can save him, actually, because Padme takes off. We know exactly where she's going. And, of course, clever Kenobi, he sneaks on board. Uh, love won't save you. 
says Anakin. Oh, his dialogues have never been that good. Uh, for being special boy, Anakin is fairly myopic about things. Uh, he, he should be sweet-talking Padme at this point, not yelling at her that love won't save her. He's pretty weak-minded, to be honest. Uh, told, p- told Padme to get away, and she gets choked like from a distance. He does this weird thing where he can like just make her choke. Uh, obviously, he was creepy. Now he's abusive. Uh, better off without him. Kind of think he killed her there for a while. I believe anything at this point. But then Obi-Wan picks a fight. He he draws the saber first, and we get an epic lightsaber battle. Then we get an epic lightsaber battle between Yoda and Palpatine. No red guard guys allowed. It's just mono, well, whatever he is, alien on cartoon face. Uh, Yoda's not a good leader, but he is kick-ass as a warrior. Uh, so this is going to be a fun battle. And they keep going back and forth. Pacing's a little bit off here uh but we i'm thinking i'm thinking yoda beats palpatine but anakin beats kenobi and then we have yoda versus anakin face off that's what i'm thinking but then somehow yoda and palpatine end up rising up into the senate chamber don't know why that happened um unexpected and kenobi and anakin vader seem well matched Palpatine starts throwing some some of the senate pods at yoda i'm figuring yoda just throw some back he loses his lightsaber, which at this point, I realize that a safety feature of lightsaber should be some sort of tether so that if you drop it, it just stays on your hand and you can pick it back up instead of having to always use the force to bring it back. And then finally, Yoda just kind of runs away. He's just like, uh, you know what? I lost my coat, so I'm out of here. Uh, Vader doesn't look to be in danger, even though Palpatine says, I sense Lord Vader is in danger with my cartoon face senses. Uh, but Vader is actually doing pretty well with Kenobi. He's kind of winning, and there's lots of lava, and it's an epic battle. Uh, it's hot. That factory needs better safety mechanisms is one thing I wrote here. Because uh, they just kind of ran into a panel at one point, and the whole thing seems to be falling apart. And then Kenobi cuts off Anakin Vader's legs. Kenobi wins. So I was wrong in re- I was in reverse. Yoda lost to Palpatine, but Kenobi beats Vader. Revenge killing, maybe? I never believed they liked each other. Uh, oh, and now he says he loved Anakin. But then he just leaves him to burn. He actually kind of just watches him burn. They just like each other. He doesn't do anything to save him. He doesn't take him into the ship to get medical. But he doesn't finish him off either. He's like, eh, I'll just let you, I'll just let you burn. Uh Padme is alive, thankfully, we find out, and uh, Anakin is dying or dead. Uh, no, not dead, we find out real quickly. You know who cares? Palpatine. Darth Sidious cares about his little Vader. He's a better friend than Kenobi ever was. Uh, and then we switch to a cool hidden asteroid base. I just want to spend more time on that base. They even have people in spacesuits walking around. Uh, and then we flit, We start going back and forth, back and forth. Burned up Anakin uh, is getting rained on. They, shouldn't they have covered him as they're bringing him into the medical bay or wherever they are on the city planet? Then we go back to Padme, who's giving birth, but also is perfectly healthy but lost the will to live, so she's dying. Makes no sense at all. Just, just have her dying. She was on a lava planet, for goodness sake. Why do you have to make it like, well, no, she's perfectly healthy, but she's lost the will to live. Then we find out she's having twins. Twist! Holy cannoli! Uh, she names one Luke, one Leia, and then uh, I'm thinking, you need to hide these from Dad. Uh, we go back to Anakin. Messed up. Uh, needs a full breathing mask. Then Padme is dead. Oh, that was sad. That was sad. Padme was actually one of the only likable and understandable characters in this entire three episodes so far, and she is gone. Uh, Anakin, though, now I get why we were introduced to Robot Grievous, half Robot Grievous, because Anakin's kind of like Grievous now. Gets a nice deep voice with that mask, though. Uh, and the Frankenstein bit where he comes off as a little on the nose, but, you know, that's been a thing through a lot of these is tributes to old sci-fi movies, so that's okay. Then we're back on Naboo, sadly, uh, for the funeral. Uh, they say something about keeping the twins away from the Sith, but then they give one to Senator Organa. 
uh, who's going to be going to Palpatine's home all the time on the Capitol. I guess he just won't take the baby with him. Uh, but Kenobi takes the boy and is going to take him back to the desert planet where his mom was from. Okay, good. Uh, little funny bit where the gold robot gets his mind wiped, but apparently R2 is trustworthy at this point. So the loose wire thing, I don't know where that came from. Um, we never did see Comic Relief Guy. We just at the funeral. And uh, <laughs> uh, so many cool planets here. I, I can't read all of these notes at the end because uh, it, it's kind of flipping around, kind of dragged out, to be honest. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. We're done. We're done. People are dead. Uh, but Luke goes to the farmer people uh, where Anakin's mom was. Olea got the better end of the deal because she's on a pretty mountain planet with, with uh, palaces. And uh, there we are. That is the end of episode three. I'm assuming the next episode will show us what happens to the kids, uh, probably showing us Anakin Vader uh, working with Palpatine. I don't know who their enemy is going to be. I guess, I guess we saw... Okay, so we have Yoda, and we have Kenobi, and we have Senator Organa, who are all trying to conspire against Palpatine, who's now an emperor, and uh, and Anakin Vader. And then we got the kids, we got the secret kids. So we're set up for, for something interesting to happen in episode four. Uh, it feels like we resolved a lot of things. And if I didn't know there was an episode four, I'd be like, this was a horrible ending. Everyone lost. But I guess that's kind of where you're supposed to be. Okay, every, all the chips are down. What is going to happen next? How do we get out of this horrible mess that we've created by letting Palpatine manipulate us all and tricking us into thinking he was two different people, but he was really one all at the same time. So there you go, folks. That is Pretend I'm Dumb About Star Wars. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, leave us a comment. Let me know what you're thinking of it so far. There's only five more episodes, no, four more episodes to go. Uh, YouTube.com slash Ace Detect if you want to watch it on video. If you want to just get audio and if you want to subscribe to it uh, as some kind of audio podcast thing, go to TomMerritt.com and look for P-I-D-A-S-W in the navigation. Pretend I'm Dumb About Star Wars. And mostly, you should go to AndrewAllenTrio.com and buy Live from the Cantina, a Star Wars jazz tribute, and or one of his many other fine albums as well. Thank you, Andrew Allen, for letting us use your music. Thank you for watching or listening. Talk to you episode four, A New Hope, next.